Radio in Arizona really started in 1921 in a bowling alley owned by a man named Earl Nielsen. He had, as a hobby, a radio station called 6BBH. It was almost like a town hall. It wasn't really a business, at least in the 20s. He eventually realized that uh, in addition to the bowling alley, he might ought to have a real radio station. And then in 1929, Jack Williams, who would later become governor, convinced him to change the call letters to the distinctive three-letter call, KOI. Throughout the 20s, 30s, and even 40s, well into the 50s, there were really just two major radio station brands. There was 550 KOI, and 620 KTAR. So for years, it was just those two stations. It really was a duopoly. Danny and the Junior singing at the hop of the good old days why they have to stop. They were both full-service radio stations. They did a little bit of country music, and they did a little bit of chit-chat and swap shops. Our catch line was, KOI, the only radio station you'll ever need. This is Bob Scott, KOI election news at 6.30. One half hour from now, the polls close. Then it sort of became the format for both KOI and KTAR to have hourly newscasts. We're proud of KOI News. Maybe that's why it's more than just a break in the music. Radio had to change because of television. And over time, the AM stations really had to abandon their full service formats. 55 KOY music. Raindrops have fallen on my head. The invention of Top 40 really jump-started radio after television came along. The notion of playing 40 of the most popular songs over and over. Radio stations had to come up with different ways to attract audience. 55 AM KOY. I really like the music they play more. That really caused radio to need to uh, format more specifically for more narrow demographics. It's just a matter of personal taste. In 1973, we lost our morning man at KOI, and another major personality who had been in the market, Bill Haywood, had left to go to Las Vegas. This is Bill Haywood of KOY Radio. I went up to Las Vegas, talked to him, and said, why don't you come home to Phoenix? So he joined us at KOI in 1973 and had a 13-year run with the station and became Billboard Magazine's Grand International Personality of the Year. That was huge. Haywood and Company, mornings on KOY Radio, a knockout. One of the keys to success was, is finding and keeping uh, the best talent available. I'm a radio personality and I've been part of the Tim and Willie Show for approximately 25 years. I started the career here in the Valley at KDKB. Hey, it's kind of a neat story. I started there as an intern. I'm Bill Andrus. I'm John Giese. This is the morning show. Somebody brought in some bagels. I want to thank you Thanks. for that. Uh, you got a knife so we can cut these things? Uh, no, but I have a chainsaw. Even better. And they said, here, Tim, you'd be John Giese's new partner, and, and that was a great experience. They let me uh, do the morning show with him for 15 months. I later came to be on the, a radio show uh, in Phoenix, and I was working uh, shortly after I worked with Glenn Beck on Y95. The new Y95 Morning Zookeepers, Glenn Beck and Tim Hattrick. We told our bosses right up front, we don't need gimmicks to sell the new Y95. We've got a better mix of music, great DJs who don't yak too much. Plenty of easy contests for you to win lots of free money. And more continuous music. Plus the new Morning Zoo with us, Glenn and Tim. Y95 Airborne Traffic And report. special zoo guests. Yeah, you never know who will So in. hey, with all that to offer on the new Y95, who needs gimmicks? The new Y95 needs music and very few gimmicks.